is brought to you by the North Broward Hospital District. Good evening and welcome to Channel 19 AT&T Original Programming. This is Healthy Living. I'm Pat O'Meara and we're speaking to you live from our studios tonight. We've got an interesting guest with us tonight who's going to talk about a subject that's new to me. Uh, Dr. Miguel Gonzalez is a board certified OBGYN, not a new subject, but what he does is he has earned his medical degree from the University of Madrid. Now additionally, he is a master hypnotist and hypnotherapist. Dr. Gonzalez has been using hypnosis to give women the experience of a comfortable childbirth. This is news to me. He even used hypnosis to deliver his own children 25 years ago, something new back then. Dr. Gonzalez has been practicing medicine here in Broward County for 26 years. He's active on the medical staff of Broward General Medical Center, and we welcome you and are happy to have you here tonight. But before we get into the childbirthing process and the use of hypnosis, so many of our viewers are often confused about what the state of hypnosis really is. What really happens to you when you go into hypnosis? Is it a scary thing? Is it something that you once you get into, if you're not there to take them out, they're stuck in that zone forever and ever? Explain to us first the process of hypnosis. What state is it? Okay. Well, this is the, the big problem that I have in practice medicine with uh, sometimes with the patients and sometimes with the doctors to explain what is hypnosis. And the bad rap that this has been over the years, you know, having uh, uh, the experience of most of the people has been in, in, in maybe in shows and television or in cruise ships and people go uh, on a stage and do the chicken or some kind of silly <laughs> and stupid things. Um, but it is uh, something uh, much more serious, of course. Uh, you know, this is actually is an, uh, a natural state of mind. Your mind is many times into hypnosis or, or, or tapping into the subconscious mind and you don't even realize about that. It's nothing uh, parapsychological, it's nothing magic, it's, it's, it's nothing uh, esoteric. It's, it's a state of mind that only you have to know how to go and reach that point because hypnosis is all self-hypnosis. And all what I do is to teach and to show a person how to go in that state. And you are there, and then you, you take the advantage of, uh, of the power that gives you the subconscious mind to act in different ways and to, and, and, and to have a lot of uh, uh, good applications, and like in, in childbirth and, and for many other type of problems where hypnosis can produce a, a therapy. And we are using every single day much more about these techniques and, and with alternative and complementary medicine right now is more accepted and, and it's more, and we know more about that, about so hypnosis. So do you work with people to teach them how to better use this certain state of mind to take control of some issue, whether it be childbirth, which we'll talk about a little bit later, or pain control, perhaps, pain from another operation yeah. that they've had or something that can't be fixed, a scar tissue or something, internal scar tissue. Do you teach people how to put themselves into a relaxed state so that they can control the sensation of this? Of course. Um, one of the main uses, and we use a lot in nurses in the pain control, and this is a, a, one of the things that we use in, in childbirth for pain control, but it can be used for chronic pain control also. Of course, and they can be used for alcoholism. They can be used, uh, be used for uh, weight control. They can be used for a smoking sensation, uh, improving games for uh, for uh, for golf, for tennis, and a lot of things. Is tapping into the subconscious mind, mm -hmm. and the subconscious mind is a, has a tremendous power. It, it's nothing new. It's been used for many, many years, for thousands of years. A matter of fact. What's the difference between hypnosis and sleeping? Oh, the, the problem that we have right now, uh, <laughs> and this is a, a big problem and, and with most of the people, uh, because when they think about, and because the word hypnosis means sleeping, but actually when somebody is into hypnosis, they are not sleeping at all. They are more awake than ever. And a lot of people also, the, the misconception of the hypnosis is some people are going to lose control completely and they are going to fall asleep or 
they are going to start talking and saying secrets that they have, or maybe they never wake up. And that's, that's not the fact. They are very much awake. They have control completely. Uh, it's a matter of fact, they, they, they listen to the, uh, all the noises, all the sense are much more acute and, and, and much better for a person that can, that can sense everything better. So the stories we hear about people going into a hyp hypnotic state and recalling maybe bad things that happened to them when they were a child, uh, that's only brought about because they wish for that to happen and you're helping to bring that out as, as a hypnotist or us others who are in psychology do? Yeah, of course. Hypnosis is, uh, is, um, is tapping into the subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind is where is, where is the permanent memory. In the conscious mind, we only use temporary memory. But in the, in the, in the subconscious mind, it's like, a, it's like the hard drive of your computer where all the programs are. And sometimes for therapy purposes, of course, we have to regress that, that person to that state of mind and to that type, uh, whatever happened at, with that person at a certain age. And um, it's very amazing to know, and to see how these people really remember things when they were a child, five years old, four years old, with all kind of details, that in the conscious mind they would be unable to, to go to that, to that situation. Okay, well we're going to talk more about how this process is used now with childbirthing because this is, as I said to you when we opened the show viewers, news to me. Uh, our phone lines are open though if you have some questions about uh, what you've heard so far tonight for Dr. Gonzalez. Uh, please feel free to call us at 532-6706 where we're speaking to you live from our studios tonight here at Channel 19. Can anybody be hypnotized? Is it any age, or does it stop at a certain age? If we have some uh, some viewers that are a little bit older than our childbirthing mothers, uh... um, hypnosis is self hypnosis. Okay, so anybody that wants to be hypnotized can be hypnotized. Okay. Uh, sometimes the problem is that people are too anxious to be hypnotized and they cannot be hypnotized. But if if somebody wants to be hypnotized and and follow the suggestions, because I will give a suggestion. And when I give a suggestion, the person can go and can accept the suggestion and then go into hypnosis or don't accept the suggestion. Or the people go with the idea, well, I, I really don't know if that's going to work, but I have nothing to lose. Let's get a, give a chance. It's not going to work. Or I'm going to try to be hypnotized. It's not going to work. And some people said, uh, I think that uh, somebody tried to hypnotize me and I couldn't be hypnotized. It's because they don't want. Or sometimes they were into hypnosis because remember everything they thought they were not hypnotized, and actually they were hypnotized. They were? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have some video that you brought with you tonight of the process that you utilize in the childbirthing process and in the teaching that you do to help others, um, men and women, uh, in the husband's role as far as the childbirthing process. Let's take a look at that, and, and maybe you could explain what you're doing here. Okay. Um, as, uh, as you see there, this uh, lady is a, a lady, um, she went into, an, to have the, the delivery of the baby with two, two sessions of uh, hypnosis. Um, um, she was getting trained in some place, but she called me as an emergency because she thought it was, was not getting no time. She was falling asleep, and she wants to, to do my, uh, she, she saw in the, in, the, in the newspaper, and she wants uh, to do uh, my, my, my method. As you see, what I am to the into hypnosis right now is completely hypnotized. And, and you can see I create pain in the abdomen, so the sensation of the pain that she's getting right there, then is going to transfer into in, in the brain to the point that that sensation is not going to be uncomfortable anymore. So that's a, a way of, of training um, that I do uh, prior to, to the to delivery of the baby. And there are sensations in which I, I produce this uh, anesthesia, and it's what I call uh, uh, what we call like a natural epidural, actually. So the patient knows what epidural means. So they go into hypnosis and they don't feel uh, any pain at all. One of the parts, the most important part maybe, and the whole method of comfortable childbirth that, I, that is how I call, is to remove the fear and the patient. Because the, the pain sensation, they are uh, really amplified in a state of fear and anxiety. And most of the women, just the fact that they, they are going to have a baby, they panic and they hear all the wrong and the bad stories for, as a matter of fact, biblically for many years they said you are going to deliver it with pain and suffering. Right. And they heard things from the mother and from, uh, from friends. So 
they are going to have a baby and instead of panic. And as a matter of fact, um, semantics the, the, means that the words means a lot. And unfortunately, a lot of doctors and nurses are still using uh, uh, words like uh, uh, labor pain. So call me when you have pains every 10 minutes. Okay, well tell me what you're doing here. You just did something to her and now is this her husband? Yeah, well it's edit a little bit, but what I do is transfer uh, the, uh, um, the hypnosis quote power into the husband. Actually the patient is the one who does it. So, but the, but the, the, uh, the husband when touch the forehead is the cue to, to go and to fall uh, into hypnosis. Now, in this case, though, you just snapped your I fingers. I just snapped. I told her that I was going to do that. The most important thing in the nose is to prepare the mind. The, man, the yeah. mind is going to do things. If you said, when I do that, you are going to do that, or this is what you want to feel, is what the mind is going to You have to prepare the mind, prime the mind. And I said, after I do, when I click my, my fingers, you are going to fall into hypnosis, and she will do that. And she, she helped wants to do you it. to do that to her yeah. by telling herself well, that's what she wanted. Yeah, okay. and what, what happened actually, this patient has been already going to what we call an induction. It would take maybe like six minutes to go and relaxation. But now, after that first session, we have what we call, um, and this is the state now, the post suggestion to the fact that when I touch her in the forehead and she's ready for it, she will come to this state of relaxation that she had before. So this is what a post suggestion, all I had to do is touch the forehead and she will go to this type of relaxation. And you see that in the forearm there, I was sticking needles. Uh, oh, is that what you had there? Yes. I thought you were just and, pinching and, and, her. And, yeah, well, I was, no, but you see that um, some blood coming out. Oh, this I is, see you know, that. And it, but she don't feel anything at all. She don't feel pain at all because I give the suggestion that she has anesthesia in the forearm. And then I transfer this anesthesia to the belly. Oh. So she will, you know. Okay. So these needles that you're putting in her are not meant, to, they're meant to help train her to take control of that pain but sensation. But these are regular needles that we use in the office to, uh, okay. to take some blood. Okay. You know. So, and then the husband uh, can do that. And I teach also self-hypnosis to the patient to, with a cue that when they put the thumb and the finger together, they can go and relax and go to this state of relaxation. They, and they practice that at home. So what did you just do? You lifted her head up? Okay, well, yes, because I left the head up right now, okay. And, and she's still in the hypnotic still in the, state. And she can walk into hypnosis too. Because one of the things that I do with this hypnotic state and the hospital, uh, she can walk and the labor room with a, a unit of, we call telemetry, so we can monitorize the baby. Mm -hmm. And she can be walking and they, I have other videos that can show big contractions with no discomfort at all. Mm -hmm. Be now, you teach these patients of yours, like this patient that we just saw, you teach her for some time prior. This wasn't her first visit to your office. And this one was the second visit. Second visit. Okay. So I have, I spent with her two hours because, <laughs> as a matter of fact, she was going to deliver by another doctor and, and another hospital, and, and she was panicky because it was going to be induced. But normally, you have a process by which you have a series of, of sessions that you go through with somebody. We're going to talk a little bit more about that, maybe take a caller from some of you viewers who have some questions.